Hello, I think we've got a great one. We're going to take a look at the Fantex D30. This is the 120mm version. I do have a review of the 140 underway, but it's still some time away. Let's get into it. And this video was brought to you, brought to you by, well, this channel. Me and you guys who have uh, joined me as YouTube members and patrons, and as well as just watching the videos. So, thank you very much. So, first, a little bit of spec information. So, this fan, if you buy it as a standalone, is like $40. Uh, so really not the most cost effective, or you can get three for like 115. Uh, keep in mind that the tariff situation, prices are always under flux, so make your best judgment. So I have on here both the reverse and regular edition. I'll have a separate video for the reverse version of the fan. It spins up to 2000 RPM. Let's see how it does in uh, performance. All right, now we're taking a look at the D30. We have both the regular and reverse blades. I've just got it in a uh, circle well, the, the color wheel, so it's just cycling through all the colors. I will say that it creates a very interesting effect on the blade themselves. The blades are white, so they just reflect the light from the illuminated central hub. So it gives it a, I want to say, more unique type of appearance than uh, most other fans that we're used to seeing. The outside of the hub also has some amount of illumination and a little bit on the back as well. Um, I'll say the illumination is a little bit more, it's both fancy and more basic because there's a lot of uh, RGB LEDs built into the central frame, but the way it illuminates it is what's kind of the complicated part, but the whole outside of it is much more basic. So I'll leave it up to you for what kind of aesthetic that you actually like. For me, maybe isn't my thing, but that's the nice thing. It's all up to opinion. The fans do interconnect with each other. Um, golly, I forgot how they do that. So I did just kind of just remember. So obviously one's a reverse, one's a forward. It has this little adapter thingy and you'd kind of get it into place somehow. And you would have the other side and get it connected and then it would lock them together, something like that. So for the purposes of this review, I'm not gonna connect them. Just know that they can be interconnected if you so desire to have a daisy chain together. The blade design is sort of like the uh, T30, is it? And But they're very smooth, very basic, but they do have a lot of curvature to them. And these being extra thick fans would allow for a very steep like curvature slope going back into the frame to accelerate the air behind it. So we just have to see in testing how well it actually performs. And as a general note, reverse blade fans always uh, perform a little bit worse than their regular blade counterparts, just because the struts do interfere with air entering the fan, so there's as much air surface area to enter the fan blades themselves. So you're gonna see a little bit of either a performance drop or at a performance at a specific noise level. So we're gonna see that in testing. Uh, but other than that, I think I covered the basics for this fan. So let's check it out. All right, the first series of tests are my case simulation test. This does assume an air-cooled type system, so front to back airflow type design, like my little picture up here. With the front fans blowing towards your air cooler. Now there are many iTex cases that are very super skinny and the GP would be kind of on the back in a vertical orientation and the 16 mark would be applicable to that but every other size computer case would be uh, on here in more of a regular type format. So I took four key measurement locations the 6, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5 inch marks. The 6 inch mark is that small form factor that I just talked about as well as putting fans on the bottom of your computer case blowing up towards your GPU. Then you have the nine inch mark. The nine inch mark is like a media center PC where they're pretty compact, giving you that front to back airflow design. Then the 11 inch mark are your standard mid tower PCs uh, holding a standard 360 AIO. Then the 14.5 inch mark is your truly large towers holding 340 millimeter, millimeter fans. Now we need something to compare against, which is my control fan. Better fans are up. Basically, so it's got meters per second and inches away from the fan. My control fan is base three parts H of X5 to one part A14. And airflow fans, these are not. At 100% PWM fan signal, well, they look a little bit better. However, they're not really that great. And especially if you're taking a look at the noise, how noisy they are against my control fan, they are really loud, like twice as loud. So every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So they are really loud compared to my control fan compared to other fans. Well, they are on the bottom of the pack. So um, unless you really, really like the aesthetic, there are other fans that'll move air through your computer case more efficiently. 
Uh, same data, just taking a look at it in bar graph form, so we're going to keep it moving. At the uh, noise normalized 17.5 decibel reading, they once again are well towards the bottom of the pack, so we're going to keep it moving, bar graph form. And at 100% pedo and fan signal, they're finally starting to catch up, but they're still at the bottom of the pack. So, reiterating the point, case fans, these really aren't, so they won't move air through your case as efficiently as other fans. They will do the job, but they'll be noisier. So it is up to you if you want to have this exact aesthetic to, for this job. Uh, locking into specific RPMs, I'm going to move through relatively quickly because we've already established that this fan is towards the bottom of the pack, so we don't need to beat the dead horse. Um, then we have meters per second versus decibels in... Um, noise efficiency and no surprise they're well at the bottom of the pack in decibel reading same thing but this time in sewn and they once again are at the bottom of the pack All right, let's see how they do in case airflow, or not case airflow, cooling situations. So my cooler of choice here is the Noctua U12A air cooler. And the first graph here is air speed versus RPM. This is a blade efficiency graph. And the blade design is overall very effective. Um, could be a little bit better, but overall very effective, both uh, forms of the fan. Better is in the arrow direction on both these two graphs. And then we have air speed versus the noise efficiency. And it is possible that I did receive a lemon of the fan um when i purchased it but from the samples that i had they're both noisy and considering that the con the both regular and reverse fade are lining up very closely indicates to me that it's probably not a lemon but i can't rule it out uh this graph is thanks to viewers like you and my patreon members you guys rock i was able to purchase a radiator for doing testing it's the nemesis gtx 140. unfortunately i don't have a custom loop as of yet Hopefully, as this channel continues to grow and evolve and stay around, I'll have a custom loop for my test system, so I'll get better thermal data. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. So what this graph is, is demonstrating that the U12A and the Nemesis uh, line up fairly close to each other so that uh, I can say that there's a relationship for the, the two types of cooling devices, air and liquid cooling, in terms of the resistance to airflow going through it. This isn't saying that the cooling capacity is the same. It's saying that the resistance to airflow going through it. So a fan that's good at one will be good at the other. That is what this graph is indicating. So, as I mentioned, I have a test system and it does have a cooler on it. It is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. And I believe I have a piece on my channel as to the testing methodology for how I'm going to do it. Uh, basically, I do have one fan that's locked at a fixed RPM and I let the test fan fluctuate its RPM based on whatever testing parameters I have set up, and I gather performance data, simplified version. I'm not super happy with it at this time. Uh, I, th I personally think that there's some inconsistencies with it, um, like the A12X G2. So, sorry, and I noticed one error. The NFF12 is not at 0.4. That is a uh, error where it's pulling data from on my Excel sheet. Anyways, the other ones are correct. Um, I'm not super happy with the way that the data is collecting. Unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck with the AAO at this point. Um, so I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it the best that I can do, um, and hopefully continue to iterate and evolve and make my testing less and less janky over time. Anyways, this is my noise normalized at 10.5 decibel reading, and the D30 is well towards the bottom at uh, my 17.5 decibel reading, so this is a little bit louder. The D30s are still well towards the bottom, uh, with the top performer being the NFF12 on, in this uh, regime. And where's the A12X5? Right there, well towards the top, so it's doing really quite well. 
Oh, and my thermal load on the CPU is 165 watts on an 11700K. And letting everything go to max 100% PDOM fan signal. The D30 is sitting, well, still towards the bottom of the graphs. So indicating that it's not doing, I mean, it's doing just fine. The temperatures are actually pretty good. But there are other fans that seem to be doing a whole lot better than it. Which is why, like, the TLS-12S seems a bit high for what it is. So again, I am revisiting it. This is just what it's come out to at this time, and I've tested a couple of these fans two times already. So I'm going to give it a third revisit and see where things end up shaking out to be. So just note that this has a bunch of caveats that go along with it at this time. Oh, and I should mention this is also after each one of these fans takes like an hour. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see that it's a lot of hours of testing just to get to this data. So revisiting it is, is a long time. All right. I just want you all to understand that. Thank you. Okay. Back to air speeds through the coolers. So this is back through the U12A air speed going through it. So the red is my 10.5 and the blue is my 17.5 decibel readings and the D30s are towards the bottom. So this is lining up actually pretty closely with the temperature graphs that they were not ranking very highly overall. And uh, locking into specific RPMs, 800 RPM, they're towards the bottom at 1,500. They're still towards the bottom of the graphs. And at 2,000 RPM, well, the reverse blade is actually doing better than the uh, forward one. However, the forward one is significantly quieter. And this is where I say that uh, the, other, the temperature graphs are a little bit off because the G2 ranks actually fairly quite well. Uh, on, only a little bit behind the A12X5. Well, on the other graph, with the temperatures, it was doing significantly worse. So, again, I'm mean, keeping as consistent as I can, and why not? But I'm not particularly happy with the way the thermal results are coming out right now. Locking into 100% PDOM fan signal. So, at 2000 RPM, these fans are basically at maximum. So, they haven't changed position, but fans that can spin faster will go faster, and you can see how they rank overall. And this is the air speed versus dust reading. So this is that noise efficiency of the, these fans. And both the D30s are ranked pretty low compared to my main grouping of fans, uh, with one of the top performers being the Mega Cool 120. Uh, same thing, but in Sewn, again, Sewn is just a different way of taking a look at noise data. All right, now we're on to CFM testing. This is my brand new CFM 180 test, as I'm calling it, because it uses my uh, variable front apparatus. That's sort of a cone shape. And the D30s are ranked well towards the bottom of the graphs, uh, indicating that they're not able to move air uh, particularly efficiently through it um, at my noise normalized results. The Mega Cool 120 is, however, one of the top performers, along with the uh, M25 G2, the TLS12S, the a 12 x 5 all ranking very well towards the top. And if you're wondering how these are ranked, they're ranked with an average of the scores of the two noise normalized results, which is why there's some uh, swapping of places depending on uh, which data point you're actually taking a look at. Uh, same test, but this time at 100% PDOM fence signal. And the D30s are basically smack dab in the middle of the pack. Not particularly exemplary, not particularly bad. Uh, probably right in line with other 2000 RPM fans. Now we're on to my CFM Classic test. This is a much shorter tube, no uh, focusing area in it. It's just 420 millimeter class fans and better fans are pointed off in that direction. So the first graph here is CFM versus RPM, and the two fans are lined up right on top of each other with my control fan over here. So not particularly efficient in this test when you compare them against it. Uh, moving on to my uh, noise efficiency of the graph. And the uh, D30s are still well behind my control fan. Going back to this RPM versus CFM, I think I may have, yes, I did collect select reverse blade two times. So actually the regular one should be actually doing better than it. Uh, anyways, we're gonna keep things moving forward because I have everything in bar graph form anyways. So in the bar graph form, we have it on here and the D30s are well towards the bottom of the graph, indicating that they're not particularly efficient when compared to other fans. At 100% PDOM fan signal, the story is holding true the exact same way. Even compared to other 2000 RPM fans, they're not particularly efficient and they're quite a lot noisier than them. Now, in terms of CFM versus the decibel reading, uh, both the D30s are well towards the bottom, uh, with the reverse blade doing particularly bad in this test. Uh, this test is notorious for being 
bad for reverse blade fans, even with my newest modification to it to help reverse blade fans with it. They still underperform when taking a look at this test. All right, so for low wattage CPUs, it's not doing pretty well because that is indicating into my noise normalized results. For high wattage CPUs, again, for a cooler that is able to handle the thermal load that would be considered like a high wattage CPU, more than 100, probably more than like 120-ish. It's also not a great choice. Now, Fantex has an AIO that uses these fans. I'm sure it does so it's fine, but based on my testing, if you slapped other fans onto that AIO, it would do even better. So for small compact cases, this is a bad choice. For um, medium to large cases, it is also a bad choice. And for my CFM 180 testing, it's an okay choice. So that brings us to the raw data. This data does belong to me and this channel. If you would like access to the data, it is available if you become a Patreon or YouTube member at one of my higher two tier levels. You just need to send me an email and request access. It is on a Google Drive. For that access, I plan on updating it um, quarterly, every six months, uh, as I get videos out with applicable data, basically, on the, uh, on the Excel table. If you'd like to help support this channel, regardless of whether you'd like the access to the data or not, please think about joining me as a YouTube or premium, premium member, Patreon member, because that funding goes directly into supporting this channel and buying test equipment and helping me upgrade and getting to the next levels because, well, computer hardware is expensive and um, my test system would be completely customized for the usage for this channel uh, as opposed to my own personal use, which is... and. Um, I also am planning on doing a custom build for uh, my case simulation type testing to get thermal results with that, which uh, I'm going to talk about actually in an upcoming video, so I hope you'll tune in for that. And uh, as always, I thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, please spread the word about this channel that I do a lot of fan testing, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.